There are many ways to measure posture. Qualitatively, you can look at the level of the shoulders, the chin, the ears, the nose, the top of the head. You can look at the carrying angles of the arms. You can look at the distance between the arms and the trunk. You can look at the level of the hips, the greater trochanter, the patella, the ankles, and of course the feet. From the side, it's quite possible to observe something called the plumb line, which is a line between the ankle, the knee, the hip, the tip of the shoulder, and the top of the head or the ears. This dotted line represents ideal posture in standing and follows the lines that I just mentioned. However, if the shoulders happen to be forwards or protracted on the thorax, then the plumb line follows the shoulder, not necessarily the neck. The neck would be from C7 to the top of the head, but the plumb line follows the shoulders, and if they are protracted, the forward shoulder to the top of the head will create an apparent neck extension. But in actual fact, it's not the neck that's in, in extension, it is just the plumb line that falls into extension. This is similar for the trunk, because the trunk line is made from the greater trochanter up to the top of the shoulder. And if the tip of the shoulder happens to be forwards and protracted, then the trunk line will also appear to be forwards. This is why it's good to have some 3D image of the person in reality as opposed to these arbitrary plumb lines. In Quinematic, we still choose the plumb line because that's considered standard practice in most gyms and wellness centers. The next feature that is rather important to posture is the center of mass, because the way you hold your body determines where your center of mass is located. Center of mass is all body parts put together with their own segmental center of masses to find out where is actually the balance point in a person's body. It normally resides just under the navel. The center of mass is subject to gravity, which wants to push it down to this point here, which we call the shadow of the center of mass. The location of separate body parts will determine where the center of mass is located. In this case, this person's posture is leading to a center of mass that is slightly forwards and slightly to the right hand side. Here we have a person in standing posture where the hips are slightly to the right and the rest of the body is vertical. The head has a tendency to be two centimeters from midline. So in actual fact, what appears to be vertical is indeed a slight tilt to the right. So it's fair to say that this person is tilting from the feet up to the hips and continues to tilt all the way up to the top of the head. This could be for many reasons, a leg length discrepancy, tilting of the head, which is causing a corresponding tilt of the body, some balance mechanisms in the inner ear, some proprioceptive feedback from the lower limbs, which is favoring the right side, some asymmetries in the trunk, such as a scoliosis or asymmetry in muscles, which would then also possibly affect the shoulder girdle, which is then affecting this angle here. There are so many things that could be looked at. So once this postural assessment has been done visually and measures have been taken, then one needs to go a little bit deeper to see what is the cause of those postural alignment features. From the side, this person has a more or less straight line from the ankle to the knee slightly hyperextended knees, hips are forwards of the knees, so a tendency to go into a little bit of a sway back or a military pose. Mind you, the shoulders are somewhat protracted here, leaning forwards. 
which would imply that this person's true spinal posture would be closer to here and the head is more or less upright. That being the case, if there is a line from here to here, this person has somewhat of a sway back. The sway back tends not to use the glute muscles, but hangs on the hip muscles, plus or minus the muscles of the abdomen. This person's centre of head is two centimetres forward of the midline. And as we saw previously, it is two centimetres to the right. So we have a corresponding centre of mass which happens to be forwards and also happens to be slightly to the right. With 55% of the body weight distributed on the right leg and 45 distributed on the left based on the postural alignment. Repeat testing just six minutes later shows very similar measurements. Again, this angle in the trunk to the arm remains. The hips are one centimetre to the right, the head two centimetres to the right. Hyperextended knees, somewhat of a sway back. The only difference here is that this number is a little bit larger for the neck angle and that's because in the second test the shoulders are even more forwards. The position of the centre of the mass is more or less the same this time at 54, 46 instead of 55, 45. This comparison is made to explain that the repeatability of the measures using Quinematic is very, very good. Here we have an exaggerated sway back posture just to show the relationship of the body parts. The ankle to the knee to the hip is more or less a straight line. A little bit more angle of the thigh at 9 degrees compared to 7, simply because there's a little bit of extension in the knee. And then from the hip up to the shoulder, we have a backwards angle of 10 degrees of the trunk. Now this is a trunk line from the hip up to the shoulder. It does not necessarily represent extension or flexion in the thoracic spine or the lumbar spine. They are not separated. So the line from the hip up to the shoulder and then up to the head shows that this person has a sway back with a vertical head posture. Thanks to the fact that the person's hips are so far forward, the center of mass also falls forward in relation to the feet. There was a slight tendency for the body weight to be towards the right hand side, hence 53-47, but that could not be considered significant. Here we have what might be considered a classic back pain posture or an elderly person posture where the center of gravity is a little bit lower by flexing the knees and flexing the hips and leaning slightly forwards. Plus or minus the head slightly forwards. This has the effect of tensioning the back to stiffen the back and unloading the limbs by bending the knees ever so slightly, making it a little bit softer to stand and to walk. As I mentioned, it also lowers the center of gravity, which helps to preserve people's balance. Interestingly, when you look from the front, you may not actually observe the difference. Very nice posture here in terms of the limbs and the trunk and the shoulders, with a slight tendency for the head to tip to the side which seems to be occurring in the upper cervical spine or the head on the neck. Although this person is leaning forwards, they are doing so in a fashion that lands the center of mass exactly in the middle of the base of support. 
And this, of course, is advantageous for people who are a little bit worried about their balance, afraid of falling, poor reaction times. So despite the fact that their posture doesn't look so great from the side, the centre of mass can still land exactly in the right place. Here we have an example of somebody who is rather asymmetrical, quite typical of something called a scoliosis or curvature in the spine, also quite typical of somebody who has acute back pain where the muscles are spasmed on one side or they're trying to avoid pain. In this case, the hips are shifted to the left by one centimeter. There is a corresponding shift of the trunk to the opposite direction and some angulation of the level of the shoulders and then the head is tipping back towards middle. The eyes like to be horizontal and the head likes to be horizontal looking straight forward. So even though there are some adjustments in the trunk here in the shoulders here, the head will always try to find horizontal and therefore you will get some corresponding changes in the neck, in this case, tilting to the left. The top of the head is indeed only one centimeter to the right of midline. And as it turns out, if the hips are this way and the head's that way, this person is probably reasonably well balanced. From the side, the posture looks very good indeed. So some lateral curvature of the spine sometimes corresponds with some rotation in the trunk. And that may very well be the case. But the plumb line, which is from the ankle to the knee, to the hip, to the shoulders, to the head, actually looks quite good. Once again, with some protracted shoulders here, and therefore the head looks like it's an extension. When in actual fact, if the shoulders were here, the head would be vertical and there may be some slight sway back. And that is what I would suggest in this person. Slight sway back and a vertical head position. And indeed, because of the neutralizing effect of the hips moving to the left and the shoulders to the right, the center of mass is more or less centralized and slightly forward. Here we have somebody standing in quiet double leg stance. There are some obvious asymmetries here, particularly in the arms and the trunk, possibly in the head and also the shoulders. The measurements show that the hips are to the left, the shoulders are to the right, and the head and neck appear to be vertical, possibly tilting to the right, but they are following the trunk. The top of the head happens to be three centimeters to the right of the midline, and the hips happen to be one centimeter to the left of the midline. So this could be a scoliosis or it could be a listing or a shifting away from pain or towards pain in somebody with a back problem or a hip problem. It could also simply be a posture that's been adopted over many, many years because of a sport or a particular job. And this is just the way the person holds their body now. But at some stage with these asymmetries, aches and pains will creep in. Looking from the side, it's very clear this person has a sway back. Legs are nice and straight all the way up to the hips. The hips are quite forwards of the ankle joint. Then the shoulders backwards and then the head vertical. In fact, I would suggest that the shoulders are in protraction. And if we were to plot a line from the top of the head to the bottom of the neck and then to the trunk, this person would indeed have a forward head posture and a sway back. If we look at the position of the center of mass, because of that person's posture, center of mass is forwards, but it does happen to be quite nicely centralized. Once again, because the hips move in one direction and the shoulders in the other, and they tend to cancel each other out, which places the center of mass between the feet. Let's take this opportunity to look at this person's biomechanics report, which shows that the center of head is three centimeters to the right, center of shoulders, 
two centimeters to the right. The body mass happens to be centralized and that's why it's nice and centered when we look at the balance. And the center of pelvis has a tendency to be towards the left by one centimeter. If we look at the side position here and the sway pattern, we can see here that the neck angle is actually in extension according to the plumb line, but in actual fact the anatomical neck could be in flexion. Center of head is three centimeters forwards of the feet or the ankle joint. Center of shoulders five centimeters forwards, which is quite a lot. But keep in mind, this is the shoulder girdle on the thorax. It is not necessarily the sternum. The center of mass is three centimeters forwards. And the center of the pelvis is all of eight centimeters forwards. This is typical of a sway back. The sway back is leading to what we call a lumbo pelvic angle. That is the angle between the femur or the thigh and the trunk line. And it's as much as 10 degrees minus, which is considerable. If we look at the calculation for the trunk rotation and pelvis rotation, we can see that the right shoulder is rotated forwards and the pelvis on the right is rotated forwards. Looking at the posture in movement lab, we can qualitatively look at the body parts in respect to each other. You can see this shoulder is higher than this shoulder. You can see that the angle between the trunk and the arm is somewhat larger on the left than the right, suggesting that the thorax is a little bit in this direction, therefore the arm hangs down. And the level of the hips is slightly tilted and to the left, which could be causing abduction in this side and adduction in this side. So the line here with the pelvis is in abduction and the pelvis in line with the hip on this side and the leg on this side is in adduction. So we may have a little bit of a scoliosis here or a listing as one would say. And then when we look at the head, it looks fairly vertical relative to vertical but relative to the shoulders. There is some tilt there. If we look from the side, it becomes very, very obvious that the pelvis is forward. Of the ankle, there's more or less a straight line from the ankle all the way up to the hip. And then a backwards straight line from the hip to the shoulders. And then anatomically, I would suggest that the neck itself sits around about here and up to the ear and the top of the head. This person has a forward head posture, a sway back. Probably no tone in their glutes, hanging off their abdominal muscles and their hip, and uh, quite possibly some issues going on related to the head and neck with this forward head posture. Something we might consider a modern posture with iPads and telephones and looking down at screens most of the day and sitting in chairs and not using our glutes, back and hamstring muscles.